Hello guys, welcome to the final race of the season, the final race of the F2 journey to F1. And uh, we're here for a very sunny, very, very sunny Abu Dhabi. Um, you'd like to see um, a nice sunny race. Uh, probably the only time I'm going to race during the daytime as well um, on F1 2020, uh, given the fact that obviously the F1 races kind of start mid-afternoon and then obviously you transition to the night time. So it's, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see um, how this one you know folds out we did pretty well in the last race managed to win that race um so we're pretty good in cold uh, colder conditions hotter conditions we'll have to see how we do mick schumacher p9 after yesterday he didn't have a great uh, result in the feature race but i'm sure he'll come back um as we're starting uh, pretty much alongside of him so a prima 8 9 again not ideal um Ideally, you'd have one car in first and one car in eighth at the very least. But uh, nonetheless, we are ready to get underway. It's going to be... Oh, it's going to be tricky, isn't it, really? I mean, given we had good pace, we wasn't able to shake the likes of Jordan King uh, up until he made another pit stop. So we are definitely going to have a harder time, I'd say, trying to make it through the field. Um, I think the first lap is probably going to be key, very similar to how it was in Sochi. Um, and then after that, uh, we should be able to make a pretty, pretty easy move as uh, we look at the strategy. Once again, one-stop strategy, nothing new there as uh, traditionally, for ourselves at least, we actually commit to the one-stop. Um, very, very rarely we ever did the, uh, uh, you know, extra pit stop that's unnecessary here in the uh, sprint races. But Jordan King, just there, our rival throughout the entire championship. Um, he's done some insane, insane <laughs> moves on us and some downright outrageous ones as well. But we're ready for the lights to go out for the final time in F2 on this game for this career mode. We've got Jordan King off to a good start. Mick Schumacher looks like he's going to eat us for breakfast. Sergio Sete camera maybe fancies a move. We're going to dive back down the inside of our teammate. Um, he doesn't put up a fight. We managed to get past relatively easy. We've got Jordan King just up next. We're going to close up to the back of him as we're going to get sent a bit sideways with some dirty air. We're going to bounce all over the curbs. Uh, that's going to shake out some fillings if you do have any. But those cars are going to go so slow on the inside. We go around the outside of King and the outside of Callum Eilat. Now, Alesi is also going incredibly slowly. So we get past Giuliano Alesi because the car we're really hunting for is Louis Delatraz. He's the one on the same tyre as us. And uh, De Vries, Masushita, and whoever is in the lead, I believe it might be Aitken, they're all on ultra soft. So they're making at least one pit stop. De Vries is looking really slow. We're going to dive it down the inside of Nick De Vries. Uh, almost banging tyres, we're definitely rubbing tyres at least and uh, we're now up the back of uh, Louis Delatraz who's the guy that we're going to need to take for the win of this race essentially because everyone else is on on the, on the uh, ultra soft and we'll need to make a pit stop uh, assuming uh, ourselves and Delatraz do not tangle up uh, that would definitely not be what we want or ideal or what we need but um, yeah for sure so we're on the back of Delatraz uh, on lap 3, DRS is enabled this lap and we do have it and uh, judging by the gap, he will not, he does not. So we're going to close up to the back of Louis Delatraz. And we might be able to take essentially the net lead of this race here on lap three. He's going to defend the inside incredibly early. He gives us a little bit of a wobble into the braking zone. Maybe put us off a little bit. And uh, we are now in essentially in a Carlin sandwich. We mount the curb a little bit. And um, for that doubt, he's definitely going to come back at us here. So we're going to give him not much room at all on the left hand side. We're going to give him a little bit of a squeeze. Plenty of car room. And he manages to get back past us for the time being. We're going to go all the way around the outside of Delatraz here. He locks a front right break. We're still going to hang it. We now have the inside for the next corner and then the outside for this corner. And we managed to get the move done. That was an incredible battle between ourselves and Delatraz. So at this point, we had the outside, the inside, and then the outside once again. It was that front left, in fact, uh, not the front right that he locked. Um, the front right didn't look too bad. But uh, that, that front left was uh, definitely, definitely ugly. There's a really ugly overtake. And we go incredibly wide. I'm not sure what happened at the time, but looking back on it, um, we just lock a break because we had a bollard stuck in our wing under our car and it it just transferred over and then, yeah, it just flew out, really threw us uh, wide and off the corner. We have a yellow flag out in the final sector once again and uh, Nick De Vries is out of the session. So after what could have been a fantastic result last race for Nick De Vries, he's now out of the session and there's a safety car. So naturally, the uh, ultra soft runners do make a pit stop. We take the lead of Ragunathan up to p5 from p11 on the grid that just shows how many cars uh, favored the one stop strategy this race as opposed to the, the zero stop so we've got louis delatraz behind us we currently don't have the fastest lap i believe that's going to be down to the boys who uh 
who did make their stop you know, fresher tyres more more of a rubbing in track uh, give or take and obviously with the help of DRS it's definitely going to be a lot easier for them to uh, set a faster lap time so fast forwarding it all the way to lap 11 nothing else happened I managed to maintain the gap to Louis Delatraz uh, Ragunathan stayed P5 Giotto camera and that was it that's all she wrote nothing else happened you can see the uh, the one stop runners on the bottom of the mini map absolutely nowhere we take the third consecutive win in a row this season I think that might be equaling our best I think we got um, three wins in a row in uh, Baku and then Spain I believe um, could be wrong um, I'm not entirely sure but we'll look at that um, in the next video so we'll have kind of like a pre-season video for the F1 where we look at all of the records of our season how well our season actually went and then, then before we get into the nitty-gritty of the F1 season but we're obviously elated with that victory Harry Jacks once again supporting us th through thick and thin um, I don't imagine he'd be TP'd over to uh, Alpha Tari by any means but we are on the podium once again we've done the double and um, yeah two doubles in one season that's um, that's some uh, very very good uh, racing of ourselves we smack the champagne in Lando Norris-esque style um, but yeah more than more than happy we're getting showered there by um, I believe that's Louis yeah it is indeed um, who's actually showering us there as we go over to our Primark teammate but that's it that's all the races in the F2 season completed it's been an incredibly long road 24 races um, some have been more eventful than others others have been an absolute shambles like the first two races in Bahrain they were not great uh, by our standards but you can see the gap to Aiken at the end of the championship is an almighty mighty points gap that is an insane points gap from ourselves uh, Jack Aiken just finishing ahead of um, Jordan King so unfortunately King didn't do too great there Master Shooter P4 Mick P5 that's not bad and Hubert only managed in P6 after a wayward thing wayward season but that's been it for me guys I hope you have enjoyed this season yeah, slap a like on it and we'll get ready for the F1 season soon until then guys take care bye bye